Well, hello everyone and happy Sunday and welcome to this week's edition of My Journey with Jesus. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this devotional video. My name is Dave Little and I am just a guy living in Madison, Wisconsin. And God has put it on my heart to use my YouTube channel on a weekly basis to share what I have learned about him as I journey imperfectly with Jesus and hope to uh, encourage others to do the same. Uh, this week we are diving into Luke chapter 15, and we're going to talk about joy in heaven as we move on in the book of Luke. Today we will move ahead to chapter 15, where Jesus presents three parables about repentance and the response of God to man when we seek his forgiveness. Today's episode begins when Jesus is having dinner with a group of tax collectors and sinners. These folks were the, the reprobates of society, the scum of the earth, essentially. And as usual, Jesus is criticized by the religious elites, the Pharisees, who accuse him of sullying himself by receiving sinners and eating with them. In response, Jesus delivers three illustrations about God's concern about sinners and peppers in a few scathing rebukes along the way. First, Jesus describes the search for the lost sheep. What man among you, when he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I tell you that in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. To reinforce this point, Jesus gives a second illustration about a lost coin. Or what woman, if she has ten silver coins and loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Both the shepherd who lost the sheep and the woman who lost the coin give us insight. I can empathize with this, since I lose stuff all the time. My glasses, my phone, my car keys, I'm as big a loser as anybody. In fact, this week I got a new computer at work, and when I transferred the files over from my old computer... Some really important stuff came up missing. It took me two days to recover those files. And I had a number of phone calls and, and meetings where I needed those files and did not have them. And it was a moment of great distress. When I finally got access to the files, I was totally relieved. Like the weight of the world was off my shoulders on Thursday afternoon. That's me and my first world problems. But that's the cool thing about these parables, how God responds to lost sinners. God agonizes. He searches the fields and the pastures. He lights the lamp and sweeps the house and searches every corner of the house and every file directory on his old computer until he finds the thing that was lost. And the coolest thing of all is the joy that God experiences when a lost soul is welcomed into his kingdom. There is joy in heaven. How cool is that? God rejoices when we come to him. It's also interesting to see here how Jesus gets a little dig in at the self-righteousness of the Pharisees in verse 7. These are the 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And, and clearly there was, uh, there was some sarcasm evident there, whether the Pharisees realized it or not. 
So having introduced the notion of how God values the redemption of sinners, Jesus follows this with another familiar parable, the tale of the prodigal son. This tale is familiar to, to most folks, even those of us who aren't regular Bible readers. So I won't read the entire passage, but let's go ahead and cover the highlights. The tale begins when the, uh, when the prodigal son leaves home, takes his uh, inheritance, and leaves behind his father and his family, goes out and spends all of his father's money. And as one uh, commentator pointed out, not only was he spending his father's money, he spent himself. He used up all of his energy and all of his time and all of his uh, will in, in the uh, riotous living and, and the parties and, and before long descended into poverty. Uh, there's a great song by, uh, by Keith Green from back in the, back in the 80s that, uh, that deals with this prodigal son and it's called the prodigal son suite and he, and he musically walks you through this entire episode and I'll go ahead and post that in the chat because it's a song that's very moving and, and very meaningful to me. Uh, and finally, the prodigal son hits rock bottom. He's forced to uh, live on a farm and, and feed swill to the pigs and, and he's hungry and he's poor and he's desperate and he realizes that even his father's servants get treated better than, than he is in his present condition. And at that point, he makes the, uh, the decision to, to go home and, and fall upon his father's mercy and ask to be taken in just as a servant. But when he returns home, he is surprised and delighted to learn that he is received with celebration, great joy on behalf of his father. And that is in, in keeping with the, the theme of all three of these episodes is the joy of the father and the joy in heaven when a wayward sinner returns and finds their way to God. Uh, of course, the, the other side, uh, side note in this episode is the jealousy of the older brother and how the older brother, who, who always did the right thing, was, was angry and upset and jealous at the special treatment that uh, the kid brother got when, when he came home. Uh, and he was given a, uh, a rebuke and some counsel by his father that this was indeed a moment of joy. And it's the joy of the father that is the highlight of the tale of the prodigal son. Certainly there's a lot to unpack in this parable. Even after the prodigal son leaves home, there's a picture of the father waiting and watching and longing for his son to return home. And when the son returns, the father runs to greet him and welcome him home, just as God our Father longs for us to repent and come to him. And of course, then we, we highlighted the jealousy of the older brother, which to me, you know, seems justified on some level. You know, big brother did the right thing. But the counsel of his dad was to confront his pride and his self-righteousness and share in the joy of the return of his brother. And there's a lesson in that for all of us, as the Bible points out in, 30, in verses 31 and 32, when the father says to the son, you've always been with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, for this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live, and was lost and has been found. Uh, so in that verse, we see the common theme of all these illustrations. God celebrates when the wandering soul finds its forgiveness in him. And I've been down that road myself. I've, I've shared this before on these videos, but you know, a number of years ago, back when I was in medical school, I went through a period of loneliness and depression that went on for really about two years. And as a result of frustration and burnout, I, I made the decision to just uh, put my Christian faith on the shelf and, and live for myself. I poured myself into studying. I played lots of games, which is my favorite thing to do. Uh, I did a lot of sleeping. I didn't do much else. I didn't spend time in prayer. I didn't spend time in 
reading the word. I dropped out of involvement in church and just kind of uh, started living for myself and just my own wallowing in, in self-indulgence. Um, the difference being that my dad wasn't rich enough to give me a big bag of money to go out and, and party. And I certainly didn't have enough game to, to score any hot chicks at the time, but I just turned my back on anything related to God and, and decided to indulge myself in self-centeredness. And yet, through that entire dry spell, it's, it's astonishing that I still kind of felt the presence of God. God was in the background. He was gently calling at my heart. I left God, but God didn't leave me. He continued to tug at my heart and, and just gently draw me back into fellowship with him. And, and finally, he moved in my circumstances to where my academic career brought me home to Columbus for a few months at the end of 1986. And it was that, uh, that time where I was home in Columbus for three months that, that God used that time to renew me and, and restore me through the love of my family and friends. And when I made the decision to, to re-engage in my journey with him, I would like to think there was, there was rejoicing in heaven. So the lost sheep, the lost coin, the prodigal son, those are the three things that we have engaged with today from the Word of God, and in every circumstance there was rejoicing in heaven when that wayward soul returned to him. God longs for us to come. God takes no joy in the downfall of those who reject him. And we see this throughout the Bible. God doesn't, uh, God doesn't like it. God doesn't have a, a vengeful spirit that, that takes pleasure in the downfall of those who reject him. We see this in Ezekiel 18, when God says, Do I have any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, rather that he should turn from his ways and live? That's God's desire for us. And in 2 Peter 3, we learn that the Lord is not slow about his promise. As some count slowness, he will come and deliver us from the world. He will come and hold those who reject him accountable for their sins. But the Lord is not slow about keeping that promise. He's patient towards us, not wishing for any of us to perish, but for all to come to repentance. It's the desire of God's heart to receive us into his kingdom. So let's wind things up with some conclusions. Look at some conclusions about what we have learned from Luke chapter 15. Uh, our Father, our Lord in heaven, the God of the universe, longs for us to come to him. Much like the Father waited alongside the path every day for the prodigal son to return, God waits and he watches and he deeply desires to welcome us back into his kingdom. And when we respond to him, all of heaven rejoices. We must come to him in the fashion that the returning prodigal son came, with humility and sincerity. Not pride, not entitlement. Put those things aside, cast away anger, and return to him as a servant. And for those who come to him, as Christians, we are to receive others with gratitude and grace. Not like the big brother who's judgmental and critical and focused on his own self-righteousness. Uh, we don't want to be we don't want to be that type of person who is judgmental and spiteful towards those who have uh, who have lived for themselves and lived in the world and want to come to a knowledge of Christ. We're to respond to them with graciousness and welcome them into the kingdom and share in the joy of God as God rejoices in welcoming those who come to him. And that is where we will wrap things up for today. So thank you all for listening. And uh, please feel free to leave your comments and questions in the, uh, in the comment section below this video if you have any reflections on what we have discussed here today. It's always a pleasure to, to hear from folks who uh, enjoy these videos, and I, and I thank you all for listening. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And when you give this video a like, it promotes this video in the YouTube search algorithms of other users who might be looking for reflections and, and encouragement on a weekly basis as we all journey together imperfectly with Jesus. If you want to hear more from the channel, you can hit the subscribe key down below, the little, the little bell, and you will get notified whenever new content is posted to the channel. And uh, once again, thank you all for, for tuning in today. And we um, appreciate the, the, the time that you've taken. And until we talk again next week about Luke chapter 16, God bless you all and go in peace.